Hey guys and welcome to this tutorial. In the previous tutorial we wrote a simple struts2 application. We had an action class and what we did was we configured the struts2 framework in such a way that when a user makes a request, a HTTP request, we were able to execute a method of a class by default. So we used the execute method of this action class and we uh, you know printed a simple static message and we were able to execute this method when a particular HTTP request was made and we were also able to redirect the flow of control to a JSP which was either the success or the error.jsp depending on the condition that we return. Now we had one particular problem when we ran this application we do a run as run on server you notice here there was an error message that we saw as soon as we ran the application and that was because we were using the root context url so we were using the url localhost colon 8080 starts to starter we did not have anything that uh, executes when this particular request was made you notice in the web.xml we had uh, a list of welcome files right so this these are the files that uh, could potentially get executed when you access this root context but unfortunately none of these files are available right now so there are different ways in which we can have something that picks up the root context over here like you know uh, the url slash application name so when when this url is called you need something to handle this it's most probably going to be the home page so we could have a simple jsp or a simple html to address it or we could have another action class that addresses it just like this action class addresses uh, this url which is uh, which is this one, get tutorial. So instead of a particular URL, you could have an action class that addresses a URL with the root context. So let's look at having a simple JSP. This is nothing specific to stretch. This is a, this is a simple servlet and JSP concept. So I'll create a new JSP over here and I'll call it index.jsp. And when I have this index.jsp, I'll just say index over here so that we know it's this JSP. Now, if I access this URL, it's going to display the index.jsp because this is the JSP that is configured to be accessed when the root context is accessed. Okay, now I'm going to talk to you about a concept called namespaces. Let's look at the URL to action class mapping that we have done in our previous tutorial. So notice that I have specified the URL by means of specifying the action name, which is git tutorial. Now, if I have to access this URL, what I need to do is I need to say git tutorial dot action and I get the action executed. So this is the URL for which I'm mapping tutorial action, which is the action class. Now notice how I've configured the URL. It is get tutorial. And notice how I've configured the action. I've specified the full package name and the action class name because obviously I have to pinpoint one particular action to handle the request. So this, the class that handles the request is fairly you know, detailed configuration. But look at the URL that I've configured. I've just given a name, get tutorial. And Everything else is assumed and deduced by default. So out of this entire URL, the only thing that I'm configuring is this get tutorial part. Everything else is taken as the defaults. Of course, you cannot really change localhost colon 8080 because that's where Tomcat is running. And this is the web application name. And uh, this is the dot action is the default extension that I've mentioned in the earlier tutorial. Now, Apart from this particular thing, everything else is happening by default. Now, what if I want to configure this URL? Now, what if I want to add something else to the path? Now, let's say I have an application. There's a web application that gets all the list of tutorials. It gets list of books and so on. And I do not want all the URLs to start from the root context. I don't want struts to starter slash the name of the action. I want to I want to have a nested URL. Say I want to have tutorials slash 
gettutorial.action and I'm going to put all my tutorial related action in this URL. You know, the application name slash tutorials slash and then the name of the action dot action. So, and the reason I'm going to do this is I can classify my actions properly. So let's say I'm dealing with books as well. Then I could have, uh, you know, the application name slash books slash and then I would have all the action uh, paths related to books. So this is a common thing, you know, in a, in a web application, not all the resources and all the uh, action uh, URLs would start from the default uh, web application context slash onwards. You would have a nested URL. So how do we achieve this kind of a nesting if always specifying is only this part, the get tutorial in the start XML. Now how do we achieve the nested URL over here. The way to do that is by using namespaces. So notice that this mapping between the action, the name, the URL, and the action class is inside a tag called package. So there is a package tag inside which I've actually made the mapping between the URL part and uh, the action class. Now this package is where I can specify something called as a namespace. Now notice that the package has something called as a name and an extends. We're not going to worry about either of these two in this tutorial. What I'm going to do is I'm going to add a new property called namespace. Now the namespace lets me add this kind of a nested URL over here so that all the mappings inside a package which has a namespace is going to come inside that namespace. So I can have a slash tutorials here. So now what's going to happen is instead of calling a get tutorial dot action directly after the application context ends, what it's going to do is it's going to put it inside this slash tutorials namespace. So it's going to be slash tutorials slash and then the action name dot action. So this, let me save this. Now what's going to happen is when I access this, uh, without the namespace. Now let's say I hit enter. What's going to happen is I get an error. Of course, I'll have to restart it because it's a XML change. When we're doing an XML change, like in a start start XML, you will have to restart the server. So, okay, now I've restarted it and let's access this URL, the one that we used to access before. Okay, before we did the namespace change here. Now, if I access this now, look what's the error it gets displayed. Now this error should make sense. The error says there is no action mapped for the namespace slash and the action name get tutorial associated with the context path starts to start. So what this means is when this URL is being sent, a starts framework is going to look at the URL. It says this is the context path starts to start. So this is the application that's going to take this up. Now the URL itself is slash get tutorial dot action. So what this means is that there is no namespace here. The namespace is just slash. So for the namespace slash, for the default blank namespace, it's going to look at the stretch XML to see if there is any mapping for this get tutorial action name. Now it's going to look at the stretch XML. It sees there's just one package with one namespace. It sees tutorials. Okay, this will not do because it's a namespace slash that it's looking at. It does not find anything, so it prints a message saying there is no action mapped. However, if I do not use the default namespace slash and I use the tutorials namespace and I hit enter, now what's going to happen is it's again going to look at the namespace here, which is slash tutorials, and it's going to check the start.xml to find this particular package mapped with the namespace slash tutorials. Okay, now it finds this package and then it's going to look at the action name, which is get tutorial dot action. Now it does have a get tutorial action mapped. Now it's going to look for this class and it's going to execute it. And that's how our action gets executed. So this is the concept of namespaces. It's very handy if you want to organize your URLs into nested paths. And um, if you do not specify a namespace like we did before, this tag was not there before. So if we do not specify this, that means that it's a default namespace, which means there is no namespace here. It is just slash as the namespace. So this action is picked up at the 
the root application context. Okay, and before we wind up, this is a picture that should be helpful. So this is the URL that we've been seeing, and this is the format for the URL. So you have the server colon port, it's the beginning of the URL. This is not changeable really, because this is the server in which your application is running. Next is the web application context root. This again depends on the application itself, but then the action itself is dependent on two portions. One is the namespace and one is the name of the action. The name of the action is actually the action mapping that we've performed earlier in the previous tutorial, but the namespace is what gives a, a level of nesting for the action. So the namespace itself is taken next in the URL and then it's the namespace slash and then the action name dot action. So this is how a search to URL is constructed and we can use this to classify related action names into a particular namespace so that you have an organized URL. Well, this is one of the advantages of using the package. Uh, you know, the namespace is specified in a package tag. And then there are several other reasons why you would want to bundle multiple actions into a single package. But the namespace is just one of the advantages of using a package to group related action uh, mappings. We're going to look at some more advantages of using packages in the subsequent tutorials. But for now, I hope the concept of namespace is clear. See you in the next tutorial.